What's up, everybody? I'm here to do just a, a type of commentary for the channel just so I can get it done every day and then maybe get a be uh, do better as time goes on. So that today is going to be like a quick rant. And today's quick rant is going to be about um, college, a little bit about college, and then AI taking jobs away. And essentially what I'm going to talk about is a story of this guy who just recently lost his job as a graphics designer to an AI and how that isn't a really... I don't feel bad um, that this guy in particular lost his job to uh, AI. Um, so let me jump in. Before then, like, uh, if I could ask if you could, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. It's going to be daily content, daily commentaries, daily opinion pieces. I'm not quite sure on the niche yet, but if you could maybe leave a comment below, let me know your, let me know any feedback, some honest feedback um, about what you would want to hear me talk about or uh, what you would like to see on the channel. That'd mean a lot to me. Thank you again for, for, for watching, but let's just, let's just jump right into it. I don't want to waste your time anymore. So essentially, the story goes, I'll leave a link to the video below, but this guy lost a his job as a graphics designer. He worked for this company, and he has been um, espoused as a very high employee, a uh, highly valued employee or something like that. And then he goes over a little bit in the video about how he gets a bunch of tasks. His normal daily activities is him getting some tasks, he completes them very quickly, and then he gets to go back to not really doing anything from what I understand. Um, I could be wrong, though. I, I just watched it real quick, and now I'm just trying to talk about it. Um, he he would get, a, essentially, he was low, humble bragging a little bit about how he would do three hours worth of work, two to three hours worth of work, and then get paid for a full seven seven hour day. Um, so that that's not that big of a deal. It's a little bit annoying because in particularly why I don't like that this guy was uh, making those types of comments was that now we go on to the next part where he, we get let known that he is um, being replaced. His job is being made redundant because they were able to take uh, work that he's done for the last six years and feed it into an AI model, these large language models that are coming out everywhere. Uh, it's becoming very popular in the industry, and I'm sure a lot of businesses are spending a lot of money trying to figure out how to a lot of entrepreneurs are trying to figure out how to use these different AI models to uh, make companies more efficient, and they're trying to get there first so they can get paid. So they figured out how to train a model to take this guy's uh, work and render um, templates that he would make very quickly. So he says it's something like they could, he, they've he developed an AI model that can do his job in 30 seconds when it would take him about 30 minutes. So... Unfortunate, I guess that you lost your job, but I'm not like too. I'm not too empathetic in this particular situation because it seemed like the company he was working for, he was kind of taking advantage and exploiting them. Because again, that's just my my interpretation of the video. Maybe I'm wrong. I didn't quite finish it. I think I got about seven minutes, and it's about a twelve minute video anyway. Right, right, right. Cut that out. Anyway, I don't feel bad particularly that this guy's losing job, and I I, I feel bad about what's coming that a lot of people are going to be losing their jobs um, because it's something projected. I saw one article about how 300 million jobs are going to be uh, replaced by like 2030 or something like that. And it's going to increase the global goods production by like 7% or something, some insane number on a global scale when it comes to global economics or whatever. So that sounds good to me. And a lot like when people hear lost jobs, when I hear lost jobs, uh, what what I think about isn't you know, yes it's going to be unfortunate that people are going to be losing their hourly incomes for now it's it's not it's not like you lose your job and by losing your job they're they're chucking you into space like it's some sort of exile or you're getting your head cut off like you know like you're a decommissioned machine who's getting destroyed because you're going to be ground down into raw materials you're just losing your job um, there's a lot of things that could be said about that there's there's social safety nets that we're supposed to be having you know there's welfare and from what I know, there's a lot of, you know, you have support from your families and stuff like that. And I'm not trying to be calloused about what's coming. But from what I know, what I've kind of read about, um, every single technological advancement, every technological leap, like for instance, the agricultural age, or let's say hunter-gatherers to the agricultural age. Now hunter-gatherers don't have jobs, but then they became farmers. And when the farm or the agricultural age went into the industrial age, most of the farmers lost their job. It's like 3% of America's population when I was in high school, um, uh, 14, 13 years ago, they, it was 3% of the America's population were farmers. But like before, prior to the agriculture or the industrial age, almost everyone was a farmer. All those people lost their jobs 
yet not everyone died. The population went up and the standard of living went up. So it allowed for less lesser fortunate people to actually survive. Like in today's world, there's a lot of handicapped people or a lot of people with a high mutational load, which are allowed to survive because we have the economic, um, a lot, a large, a large force of that is we have economic drivers uh, pushing, allowing you know goods to be. I, I I say this a lot to people all the time, but essentially, it's going to take more things and turn them into the price of bread over to, over a long period of time. And what that kind of means, this is kind of going into a long rant, long winded rant, but that's okay. I hope. Um, so what that kind of means is that uh, back. I, I always think about this from a perspective like AI is coming to take jobs. Okay, yes. So what is that going to do? Lose jobs. Bad. Sure. Maybe. But then I think about my, my bread. Is it what, So a long time ago, bread used to be like a day's wage or salt used to be like a day's wage in like the Roman era. And they, a lot of people used to be paid in like common goods that we go to the store. And if you like looked around for change on the, in the street for the day, you could find enough money probably um, to buy a loaf of bread. You know what I mean? And a loaf of bread is something like 1,000 to 2,000 calories in and of itself. They're, I mean, obviously, it's not going to be it's not going to be enjoyable, but it is survivable. But thousands of years ago or hundreds of years ago even, a loaf of bread was a high a value commodity. And like, let's say the Victorian era, before like uh, the FDA and like uh, food, yeah, like the Food Drug Administration and other uh, government bodies like that were invented um, to regulate food products, uh, bread was a status symbol. And because of that, bread was cut with like a bunch of different ingredients and stuff like that so that you could um, present whiter looking bread or something along the lines of that. Or I, I don't remember exactly. I just, I read it about it months ago, but essentially they were cutting bread with non-food products to make it look more white so that when they presented it to their guests and stuff like that, they would have perceived wealth because bread was a wealth symbol at one point in time. But now, Bread is something that like any bum off the street can get panhandling for like f five minutes. And they could probably get it even faster if the sign said, give me a loaf of bread, not money, because people are more likely to give food to poor people or, you know, homeless people than they are money because they're afraid, you know, whatever. Sorry, I, I digress. I digress. Sorry. <laughs> Back to the main point. So I'd be like, there's a lot to be talked about. It's not as uh, cut and dry as just losing jobs. OK, that's that's the point I'm getting at there. And then the second point is, is I kind of want to slam dunk on college education a little bit. And what, what I mean by that is how, why I want to slam dunk on college education a little bit. And this is kind of a little personal uh, topic because I've gotten into very heated arguments with a lot of people in my friend group about this, which I have feelings about that, but uh, let's move on. Um, college, I, I, there's a few things wrong with college. Everybody understands that college is expensive and it's not necessarily worth the same as it once was in an earlier time, I guess is the safest way to say it. Okay. So what I mean by that is university colleges used to be a place of higher learning. And yes, they have done a lot of studies about how I think it's something like 1.8 million or 1.8 to $2.8 million over a lifetime of a college educated student or a college uh, laborer versus a, high, uh, a laborer who was only has a high school diploma. And they were even, I think what I just read today or something about this, uh, even jobs were same jobs that are applicable for high school graduates, but people who have college degrees in the same job make more money over a lifetime doing the same thing. And I didn't get too deep into it. It was like a 40 page study and I, I only had 10 minutes on my break. Sorry. Don't want to, whatever. But Back to what I was saying, it's 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 worth more, yes. But uh, for example, if like the a college I know of, it you know you could you could do a highly optimized route to go to college. You could do something like a tech school for two years, get your generals done. You pay like two to five k a year. Spitballing numbers here, I don't know exactly off the top of my head. Uh, two to five k a year, and then you can use those credits to go to a four year and finish your two years out at that degree or at, at that, that four year and get, you know, your degree on a, on a discount and make it, you know, a bachelor's degree, you know, for 20, let's say three grand a year, six K 10 K for the tuition, 26 K for a four year. Sounds pretty good. You know, there's a lot of options to get college degrees too. Like I'm not discounting college. There's a lot of ways to lower the barrier of entry. 
like for instance, the military, you know, for instance, being born in a rich family that they can afford it and send you wherever you want to, for instance, uh, becoming the valedictorian in your high school so that you get a full college ride, for instance, being the, the most elite athlete in your school in a division one school and get scouted by a college for a really popular sport. Um, for instance, I'm just kidding. I'm just trolling a little bit. I'm memeing a little bit, but you, you hopefully you get kind of where I'm going at, but I'm talking about generally college. So for most people, average people, um, college may not be what it was cracked up to be because my story, my own personal story puts makes may make me a little biased here that I want college to lose is that I was told in high school that if I don't get a high school degree, I might as well die. I might as well, um, not go on living because I, I won't even be able to get a burger flipping job without a high school diploma. And with a high school diploma, I will be very limited in my uh, economic ability that I might as well give up uh, because without a college degree, I won't be able to get the good jobs. And if, if, I, don't, if I can't get the good jobs, I'm going to break my back. I'm going to hurt myself and I'm going to live a miserable life without a college diploma. Essentially, this, the school system was trying to pump full in my head that, oh, and to get a college degree, I had to have really good grades to get into school. Really, really, really good grades. Um, that led to some bad decisions in my life because I was not a very good student. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. The thing is, is that I now, as a high school dropout, make like 55 grand a year working in a factory. Okay? And no, it's not glamorous. It's not something that most people should do or should want to do, but it's possible, okay? And I may be a an exception. I may be more intelligent than most people, so then maybe I got a little bit of an edge on them. You know what I mean? But still, if I if I put down in my, my applications, no high school diploma, do you think that most employers are going to take that seriously? Probably not, okay? So I'm now making about 55K to try to continue the points. This is a lot of a lot going on, a lot flooring. I'm trying to make this as compelling as possible in one take. Sorry. So bear with me. Please bear with me. I'm almost done, hopefully. <laughs> you never know. If people who know me, you, you know that if I get going, I'll never stop. But let's 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 ride this rodeo. You know, let's ride this roller coaster. Let's let's get it done. Anyway. 55k. Okay. I've been at this position at this factory. I have okay, let's be real. I have Six years experience in a factory now, six six to eight. I think if you count like Walmart, I worked in a back room. I think that counted for uh, like uh, that type of experience. So it, it, it primed me to take a higher level position in the factory. I'm like mid-range, okay? So like out of all the, the jobs in my, my factory and all the positions that become available, I'm like mid-range, okay? So, but it's not unattainable. There's like people at my level, I'm not that special. I ain't special. Personally, I don't think I'm that special. But 55K. Now on the other hand, I know a couple other friends of mine who went to college and, you know, college does give you a lot of opportunities. You have a lot, you, the jobs you start out at, you're going to be at a higher threshold. So you might start at what I make. Okay. But you're leaving school in debt. Um, you're leaving school, let's say a four year degree. And if you go by the average from when I, the last time I looked up, I could be wrong about this. It takes on average five years to get a four year degree. So that's five years without income potentially. Okay. So you could be working. Um, you could be working a part-time job to help get you through college, to help offset the expenses, but you're, you're probably peeing that away, pissing that away into rent and other, let's be real partying. Okay. Partying. <laughs> I'm not trying to, I'm not paying, I'm not trying to pay with a broad brush. I'm not trying to meme here. I'm trying to be serious anyway. So, but you realistically rent food, Fast food, you know, you're studying. I'm not I'm not talking crap about fast food or anything like that. I'm not talking crap about hobbies and whatever. You got to do what you got to do to survive the grind. I understand the grind, okay? But expenses, rent, you know what I mean? Rent is a very expensive expense. And if you're working part-time, most jobs that you're going to be able to get in college with a high school diploma with that type of availability, you're, you're probably just covering rent. You have like 50 roommates. It's like not whatever. Okay, the, to, you get my point there. So let's move on. Like, you're leaving. So you left school, you're tens of thousands of dollars in debt. You missed out on four to five, let's say two, just in case you're getting an associate's degree, just be real. So two years of experience or two years of income earning, because let's say you work at $15 an hour, whatever that is, it's still like twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year of income earned. Okay. So that extra excess profit that you'd be making from that, 
could be getting put into a 401k, blah, 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 starting the compound interest, you know, starting. But more importantly, you're losing out on that thing that I just said set me above most people to get in the job I did. It's, it's experience. So the op, like huge discussion here. I'm not going to talk about which one's better or worse, but college might not be what it's cracked up to be because you're losing experience. It's a meme, right? It's the meme. You're, you're losing valuable college experience. Um, the, you know, you got the degree, but then all the jobs you're trying to hire for, they require six years of experience, but you just can't, you know what I mean? You don't have the experience. So, so businesses are fair veering people with your degree and experience. So after those people get picked, you get the crumbs of those jobs. Okay. So then most of the jobs I see entry level, like on indeed right now, the entry level requiring like a bachelor's degree are only making at most, I mean, some of them are on the higher end, like in uh, programming or operational manager or, you know, plant manager or, you know, stuff like that, like high level bachelor um, high level bachelor slash masters, um, degree jobs that'll make a lot more than me. There's a lot of those out there. I'm not saying, I'm not saying they're, they aren't out there, but what I am saying is most people's college degrees, like more and more college degrees are falling off of the ladder of value. Like they're not, they're not worth it versus the route I took is what I'm saying. And most people are average. And if the average degrees are becoming less valuable, college is becoming inherently less valuable. But so you're losing out on experience. You have debt. There is, you know, an argument to be made that a lot of people made a, the wrong decision going to college. And that might be, you know, I feel bad for everybody in the country or whatever that's got to go through that type of particular situation. And, you know, I'm just firing from the hip here. So I'm sure I missed a lot of the, there's a lot of things that could be talked about. There's a lot of nuance here. Okay. Um, but Oh, right. The last point I skipped over, I missed it. Uh, college degrees tend to force you into one skill. That's what's happening from what I see from that's, that's what jumps out at me when, when I see articles and videos talking about, uh, AI being lost, like losing jobs. Uh, this guy in the video, he talks about it, that he's been doing this for nine years. It's his only skill. Okay. So you, you get told if you got told anything similar, similarly to me, that college is the only way for you to get a high level job. I feel like you're going to value that skill set more than like you, once you did the college, you did the work once it's done. You're done. You got your job. You get to ride the boomer ride. You know, you get to ride the boomer life where you got, you know, a job as a gas clerk and you were able to buy a house for $11 and get a car for a carton of milk and then do that for 40 years and then retire and get social security on top of the $6 million pension you got from your company and the 401k that did $10 trillion a year because of the economic prosperity of everything before whatever happening, what's ever happening in our country that's causing like life to become this like puzzle instead of like a, a, a good route just painted out for its citizens. Um, The co okay, yeah, right. Okay, back to the back to the main point of that. The the college degree seems to lock people into that skill set, and they're unwilling to to diverge from that skill set and learn, like to grow beyond that college because it's like the end goal. And like your options, you go back to what you know. I feel like so you're gonna want to go back to school. So for you to get another another skill in the in the way, you know, you're not gonna go start from the bottom in another skill set. You're gonna, I mean, like in a way, you will because you you'd more rather probably go back to school. So you're looking at more $10,000 tuitions and huge complicated issues like that. And I don't know. I just feel like college is, it was kind of, it's like, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to, trying to start crap or talk crap or whatever, but I just feel like it's a college needs to, needs to go. It's no longer the meta. It's no longer, it's setting people up for failure because AI is a perfect, it's a perfect representation of that. Maybe maybe AI will change college to make it more affordable for everybody by like streamlining the whole process and stuff like that. But I just, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's my thoughts about college and AI taking jobs. I mean, if this is, uh, this could be a whole like like a podcast episode. I could talk about this like if, like if I was sitting in front of like Jordan Peter, like, yeah, or, you know, Joe Rogan, not Jordan Peterson. Joe Rogan, whatever. You know what I mean? Like on a podcast, I could talk about this and we could like the nuances could be explored and that would be really fun. But I mean, I just, it's supposed to be a quick rant. I'm already 20 minutes in. So uh, I'm going to try to cut this down a little bit. But uh, for anybody who's 
here. Thank you. And um, again, please subscribe. Please leave comments below. Give me feedback. I, I Hopefully I can get you some daily content talking about like current events, whatever. Just chatting. Chatting, commentary, opinion, whatever. We're just like, this is, could just be a place to hang out. That's kind of like the niche I'm going for here. Like, Ojama Garrett's, you're getting me. You know what I mean? Anyway, so thank you very much. Have a good day. Peace out. Subscribe. Peace, 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 peace. Have a good day. Get ChatGPT. It's a really good tool. Anyway, bye.